Hello, welcome to Wisdom of the Book of Mormon, and I'm behind a couple of days in in giving this podcast, which <laughs> I need you guys a prayer that I don't make a habit of doing that. Because starting Wednesday, November 1st, I begin my reading plan in the Book of Mormon. Now, not next year. We start with it and come follow me. But I kind of developed my own reading program. uh, Partly because, you know, um, Second Nephi, I like to read that, you know, during during Christmas time. Because of some of the prophecies about Christ's birth. So here we go. Today we're going to be covering a brief explanation about the Book of Mormon. Okay, so I want you to listen to this. The Book of Mormon is a sacred record of peoples in ancient America and was engraved upon metal plates. Sources from which this record was compiled include the following. The plates of Nephi. Now these were of um, two kinds. The small plates and the large plates. Um, The small plates were more uh, particularly devoted to spiritual material. And the ministry and teachings of the prophets, while the, the large plates, they were occupied mostly by a secular history of the people um, concerned. Um, if we look in First Nephi, chapter nine, verses two through four, might as well go to those. It says, "And now, as I have spoken." Concerning these plates, behold, they are not the plates upon which I make a full account of the history of my people. For the plates upon which I make a full account of my people, I have given the name of Nephi. Wherefore, they are called the plates of Nephi, after mine own name. And these plates also are called the plates of Nephi. Nevertheless, I have received a commandment of the Lord that I should make these plates for the special purpose that there should be an account engraven of the ministry of my people. Okay, so there we go. Verse 4. Upon the other plates should be engraven an account of the reign of the kings and the wars and contentions of my people. Wherefore, these plates are for the most part of the ministry, and the other plates are for the more part of the reign and of the kings and the wars and contentions of my people. So, there we go. It explains... What's going on there? From the time of Mosiah, however, the large plates also include items of major spiritual importance. Now, there's also the plates of Mormon. Now, this is something, I'm going to stop here. Some people want to still call 
the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormon Church. And I used to think that that was cool. But now that I, I have sat there and meditated on the words of, of President Nelson, it helps me understand. This is not Mormon's church. <laughs> Mormon was just a prophet that helps put together the Book of Mormon. Okay, now the place of Mormon, which consists of the abridgment by Mormon, from the large plates of Nephi, with many uh, commentaries, these plates also contained a combination of the history by Mormon and the additions by his son Moroni. Now, the third part is the plates of Ether. Now, these are from the people, uh, the, the Bible, of course, Jared, who was, now, their family was not, um, their language was not confounded. They were able to escape into the New World after the Lord brought down the Tower of Babel. Now, number four... The plates of brass brought by the people of Lehi from Jerusalem in 600 B.C. These contained the five books of Moses and also a record of the Jews from the beginning down to the uh, commencement of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah. And also the prophecies of the Holy Prophets. Okay. Um, so. And you'll see the notation there. First Nephi chapter 5 verses 11 through 15. Now there's some verses here. This is meant to be a guide this podcast. I encourage you this year to read the Book of Mormon on your own, in, in, in your homes, and in your lives. Many quotations from these plates, citing Isaiah and other biblical and non non biblical prophets, appear in the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon comprises. 15 main parts or divisions known with one exception as books usually designated by the name of their principal authors. The first portion the first six books ending with Omni is a translation of from the small plates of Nephi. Between the books of Omni and Mosiah is an insert called the Words of Mormon. This insert con connects the record engraved on the small plates uh, with uh, Mormon's abridgment of the large plates. Uh, The longest portion from Mosiah through uh, Mormon, chapter 7, is a translation of Mormon's abridgment of the large place of Nephi. The concluding portion from Mormon, chapter 7, Mormon, chapter 8, to the end of the volume was engraved by Mormon's son, Moroni, who after finishing the record of his father's life, made an abridgment of the Jaredite record as the book of Ether, and later added 
the parts known as the Book of, of Moroni. In or about the year AD 421, Moroni, the last of the Nephite prophets, uh, his prophet historians, sealed the sacred record and hid it up unto the Lord to be brought forth in the latter days as predicted by the voice of God through his ancient uh, prophets. In A.D. 1823, this same Moroni, being a resurrected uh, personage, visited the prophet Joseph Smith and subsequently delivered the engraved plates to him. About this edition, the original title page immediately preceded, preceding uh, the contents page is taken from the plate and it's part of the sacred text. <laughs> Introduction in non-italic uh, typeface such as First Nephi and immediately preceding Mosiah chapter 9 were also part of the sacred text. Introductions in italics such as in chapter headings are not original to the text but are um, study helps Included for um, convenience in reading. Okay. Now I'm going to go into this introduction all I want. But I'm going to say this. <laughs> some people. Some people say this. Well, because it has errors. And, 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 and how could these prophets have been known? I, I can just hear some of the questions. Let me ask you this. Those of you who just recently converted to the church, or those of you who've been there for a while, maybe there's days that you doubt. To be honest with you, I've, I've never doubted the truth of the, the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. Having read it cover, cover to cover, maybe the testimony has wavered slightly from time to time. But, to be honest with you, considering what I've been going through lately, there is nothing like the Book of Mormon. Now, am I saying that it is superior to the Bible? Uh, wrong. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. No. It's just a companion to the Bible. But yet so many people have this myth that, oh, well, you Mormons, you have your own Bible. And I'm not using this podcast to, uh, to really debate that, okay? I don't have the time. What I will testify to is the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon and what a comfort it is to me and how good it's going to feel within three days to get back into his pages beginning in, in First Nephi in reading that. I'm going to give you a hint before we close down. The next episode is going to be called I Will Go and Do. All right. So I hope you enjoy listening to uh, the Wisdom of the Book of Mormon. If I could hear, please subscribe. Become a part of the Wisdom of the Book of Mormon. Until next time, remember who you are. Read your scriptures. Read the Book of Mormon in particular. 
And please, 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 preach the gospel. God bless every, every single one of you. Remember this from the bottom of my heart. Jenny loves you. I really love you.